so I am uh, seeing my app loading up here and again I have the ability to either do the, uh, the debugging with the JavaScript console in Visual Studio or I can use Google Chrome so either way you want to do this if you're used to the Google Chrome output keep using it if you want to use the Visual Studio uh, output you can use that but anyway, I, I've got here, and then it's got there about no user logged in. It is logged in. If it's all fully set up, it'll then automatically log you in and such too. Well, the um, the app itself, it's coming together. I see it in the in the app screen, Campo CBDB, and, and it loads up with a simple splash screen, which this is what we're going to do uh, for the rest of the day in that we've got all of this coding aspect that we still are going to move forward with but I want to set up a few of the visuals the uh, app icons and such so we're going to spend a little bit of time in Photoshop setting this up so I'm going to save all of the files here you, you should get used to doing the save all especially if you're working with more than one file hit that save all which is control shift s control s is save control shift s is save all I would do that. And we need to define um, the icons for our app because I don't want to be staring at that uh, little Cordova mascot anymore. And then also when I load up the app for the first time, uh, it shows the, the splash screen. So the splash screen that starts up right here, I want to display again my own custom splash screen graphic. So that we will do in Photoshop, meaning I would recommend we exit Visual Studio. Visual Studio takes up a lot of RAM. Photoshop takes up a lot of RAM. And what we're going to need to do, we're not going to need to do in Visual Studio. We're going to design the graphic in Photoshop, put the graphics in the right folder. Then we can come back to Visual Studio and compile it, and it'll add the graphic. In my case, so I will exit Visual Studio because I've also got my screen recorder and I've got all that running, taking up memory. I don't need Notepad++ anymore. What I want to do is, um, in your flash drive, wherever you're saving your project, go to your flash drive where your project is at. Mine is on my flash drive. Open up your project in your flash drive. In there is an SLN file when you want to continue to work on this on Thursday or at home. I mean on Tuesday or at home that's the file you're gonna open don't double click it now but that's the file that would open up Visual Studio that SLN file that solution file so in the future when we come back to continue to work on the project we're opening up that SLN file inside of the CBDB folder here's oh there's the config XML oh there's the WW folder plus some other folders we don't see when we're in Visual Studio that it hides from us that we don't need to see. But when we were exploring, last time when we were exploring a basic Visual Studio project, we found where the icons and splash screens are. It was two whole days ago, I don't remember. Can anyone help me out? Where do we find? Yep. Red. Joseph? Yep. Uh, let's go to the res folder. And uh, where do I find my... Uh, the, the little icon for my app. That's easy. Icons. And since we're focusing on Android, we open up the Android folder. So we're going to need to replace these Cordova icons with our own. I'm going to make a note that I need to make icons that are 36 by 36, 48 by 48, 72, by 72 and 96 by 96 and I know that because if I click one time on an icon it'll tell me here that's 36 by 36 and it's in the file name so in Photoshop we're going to design our own icons of those dimensions with our own graphics and um, fonts and whatever and replace the ones that are here so making the note of my sizes I'm going to go to the Start menu, and we're going to launch Photoshop. Now, we have Photoshop Elements, and then we have Real Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. 
Don't click the one that is Elements. That's the junior version of Photoshop. We want the full version, Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. Click on that to start Photoshop. Now, when this starts up, we need to create a file, which will be our icon graphic. And I noted that I've got four sizes to work with. That does not mean I need to create four different files. We can create one file and resize it to the different sizes. One thing about graphics, however, is if you create a file that is small, like let's say I created a small file like this, and then you try to resize that file to be big, it's usually going to lose quality. So the rule of thumb is start with a graphic already the large size to shrink it down to the small size if you need it. Don't start with a small graphic to blow up to be big loses quality. So if I made the note here that says my largest size is 96, I'm going to create a graphic that's at least that size so that I can shrink it down to the other sizes, 72, 48, and 36. So here in Photoshop, hopefully your screen looks like mine, and we've got the button that says Create New. If you don't see that, you can go to File Menu, New. So for our for our items over here. We're not going to use any presets. We're going to change this to be called icon, the name of the file. We're not using inches, we're using pixels. And I say we've got 96, but actually we've got LDPI, low DPI, MDPI, medium DPI, HDPI, high DPI, XHDPI, extra high. We've got four sizes. That means that perhaps in the future we're going to have extra, extra high DPI, an even larger size. So even though in my folder at the moment I've only got four sizes of icons, we cannot assume that those will be the only sizes forever. These devices get more complex, more powerful, the screens get bigger. So I want to create a size even bigger than the biggest size here, just in case for the future. Because like I said, when the next version of Android comes out and they've got an icon 200 X, 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 H, what did I say about small size to big size? So we're going to start with a size of 512. That'll future proof us for a long time, like, you know, two years. So we're going to go with a very big size, which then we can resize and not lose quality, basically, when we go to the smaller sizes. If I started at 96 and next year we've got size 200, well, I've got to resize, I've got to redo my graphic, because resizing it will lose quality. Resolution 72, background contents, transparent. Let's see, where do we set transparent on this? New version. Uh, here we go, transparent. Okay, so once again, the file name will be icon, the width and height 512, 72 pixels per inch resolution, RGB, and 8 bit, I left it alone, but change your icon to contents, background contents to transparent. The point of that is if you leave it on white, you're going to have a weird white box around your icon. You're, you're not going to have transparency to see through it. Question? No yeah. On mine, too, I had to scroll down. On my mouse, I had to scroll down, and then it appears. Yeah, it was cutting off, so you might have to scroll. If your mouse if your mouse doesn't scroll, try to press the up or down arrow keys. Transparent. So let's click Create.
So we get a big canvas here, 512 size, transparency. We want to have transparent icons. You want to be able to see through your icon to the background. We'll do File Save As. We're going to save this file in your flash drive, but not in your project folder. This is a work in progress file. It's a PSD file. Eventually, we're going to export it. We're going to save it. We're going to convert it to PNG. That's the kind of file it wants, eventually. But as we work on our project, it's going to be a PSD file. So we're not going to save that into your project folder. Don't save it into CVDB. I'm saving it simply into my class file. My class, uh, the, the folder where I save all the stuff about this class, I'm calling it icon. Now, obviously, the names of these icons are something else, which we will rename when we export. But here, uh, actually, also what we'll do, let's call it icon 512. So at a glance, I see that this is my icon of 512 size. And eventually, when I'm finished making my icon, I will shrink it down to the sizes that I do need. <coughs> so I'm saving that on my flash drive. 512, PSD, save. If you get the screen about compatibility, just click OK so that it opens up in other versions of Photoshop besides the one we have here. So Photoshop is big, complex software uh, where if you take a whole semester of it, you might uh, be a beginner at it. It really takes a long time to get really good at Photoshop. Uh, so we're just going to touch on a few things. For example, we could use the brush tool. We can use the brush tool here to draw our icon. You know, there's going to be my happy face for my icon. We can undo it. Got colors over here. So I'm not artistic, and the mouse is very hard to use. I'm trying to draw a comic book here looks like a taco instead. So this might not be the best way to make my icons with the brush tool, especially with a mouse. So it's the latest Spider-Man comic right here. So um, the brush tool is not going to work the best. We have some built-in icons that might be very useful for us to, to use instead. So we've got some icons hidden over here in the... There's a little rectangle down here. If you click and hold it, you get shapes and you get custom shapes. So where you see there that uh, below the black arrow, the um, path selection, before the black arrow, you've got rectangle tool. It makes a simple rectangle. Instead, you want to click and hold it, and then select Custom Shape Tool. Because then what we could do, we can start to draw different shapes. The built-in one is an arrow. OK, got an arrow. But I have more icons at the top here. On this top panel, we've got some icons. So maybe I'll use this light bulb. That's my icon. I have more than more than these icons. There's not that many. You see right here. But I have more icons if I click on the gear, these options of this panel. So if you click the gear, you can say show me icons of animals. When I click that, it says, would you like to replace or append? I'll just click OK. And I've got some new icons. So maybe my, my app will have that icon. I can change colors over here. I'll show you about adding drop shadows and gradients and such in a moment. 
we have these other icons and um, what else? Music icons. Maybe I like that icon, but I want to rotate it. So we can do edit free transform. Or we have probably what you want is select all. Show me all the icons, and then you get dozens of icons here. So I can get these different icons as a starting point to make my apps icon. So I can combine different shapes. Because I have layers. I have a layers panel. So um, I drew one shape, it got onto its own layer, I drew another shape. So layers are, are like sheets of paper. I've got one sheet of paper on top of another sheet of paper. I can then use the move tool. It's the first tool, that four-headed arrow. I can use it to move my icons. Remember this whole canvas is going to be the icon that appears on the device. What I see people do all the time is that they make their icon like this. Okay, I'm done with my icon. You've got all of that empty space in the corner that is going to be empty space in your icon. And so you're, you're going to have a really, really small icon because it's so empty. That's when you can do Edit, Free Transform, Edit Menu, Free Transform, uh, to resize it and move it and make sure that it's taking up as much space as possible on the canvas. Now that icon is going to then take up more space on the, the icon screen. Say that again. Once you've got it selected on the layers there, you can go to Edit free transform which is also control T to transform so that allows me to resize it that allows me to rotate it once I like the result then I click the check mark on the top options bar and it confirms it Now I could start with one of these icons and then add some special effects. I go to the window menu, styles. I get a panel here where I can add these pre-built in special effects to the shape. So I've got this sort of flat looking shape. Then I can activate one of these styles and then now I've got depth, or this one over here, or this one here. That was in your window menu styles, you get a style panel. Kind of like the icons, it's limited, but if you click the icon here for options, you get also these other styles, abstract buttons. Image effects, glass, buttons, textures. So let's say I select textures, click OK, and I get some new textures. There we go, perfect. 
the hottest comic book app of all. So everything inside of the of that um, canvas is what will be in my icon. Anything outside of it will be cut off. Something to be aware of. Even though, even if you select one of these preset styles, you'll still be able to edit the individual components of it. If you see your layers panel, change the color of this, the glow of that. So these are starting points, and then you can further refine it. Well, this is something that you're going to spend some amount of time on to set up and it doesn't have to be amazing the first try and you might not have artistic ability and Photoshop is complex that's okay you're not gonna be graded on how good your graphics look because um, if it were a real graphics class I would grade very harshly but uh, this uh, is not a graphics class it's a programming class so I'll give a lot of leeway on the visuals of it it has to work you know, code-wise and such, and it has to work that this icon is part of my app. So wherever your app, your icon is at the moment, you'll have more time to work on it a little later. I want to show you then, okay, I've made my amazing icon. I want to put it into my app. So let's talk about that. We need to export this work in progress file. We need to export it as the right format, as the right file name, into the right location so that it, then Visual Studio can find it and compile it and add it to the project. I'm going to save what I have. File save. Then we'll go back to File, Menu, Export. And we'll do Save for Web Legacy. These other ones will probably work as well. If you've got experience in them, go ahead. But uh, I'll go with the Save for Web Legacy. File menu export save for web legacy. You get a screen here that's going to uh, export it with a bunch of settings. The main thing to do is on the preset, you want to select PNG 24. The kind of file that we need. For Visual Studio is a ping, a PNG 24 with transparency. It's on by default. If it didn't have transparency, your icon would look like that. Very weird. It would have a white background on the phone's screen looking weird. We need transparency. And then uh, down at the bottom here, we don't need to export it at this huge size. We need it at those four sizes that I noted. We'll start with the large one. Change the width right there of image to 96 and then press tab. That'll change the width and the height and also preview it to shrink down. We'll then click the Save button. And so where we're, where, where we're going to save this now, we're going to save this into the res folder of our, of our apps project folder into the right place. So my project is on my flash drive, so I'm going to go find my flash drive. My project is right there, Campo CBDB. I'm going to open that. Inside the Campo CBDB folder, I have the res folder. Inside the res folder, I have my icons folder. What I'm trying to do then is add an Android icon and replace icon 96. So the trick is you can just click the icon, it'll take the name. And the one we're going to save is going to replace the old one, the Cordova built-in icon. 
once you click save on that it'll say are you sure you want to replace it well yes I don't need their Cordova icon I want my own icon that I designed so I'll replace and I've replaced one so far of the other ones I need to replace So I would do the same thing for the other size. I would do the file, export, save for web. It should remember that I went with ping 24 transparency. And then I need the next size. I wrote it down. Did you? What's my next lower size? 72. Type 72, press tab. Now when I get the 72 pixel sized one, I'll save it into the exact same folder, replacing the 72, the icon 72. So I'll click Save. It remembered where I last saved. I'm going to click one time on icon 72, so it grabs the file name for me. Click Save, confirm a replace, replacement. Say so yes, replace the old one with my new one. I've got two of the icons changed. It's the same procedure for the next two file, save, export, file, export, save for web. Next size is 48. Now, one really advanced thing that you could do, as you get to these smaller sizes of 48 and 36, your icon gets smaller and smaller. And therefore, depending on how you designed your icon, it might look worse. It might be harder to read. So an advanced thing to do is to actually design the icon a little different for those smaller sizes. But if you look at the icons of most apps, they're, they're simple shapes. You know, the Google Play icon is a triangle with colors. That'll look fine big and small. The, um, oops, the Gmail icon is a simple envelope that looks fine in different sizes. So that's something to think about, that if you are working with um, something really complex like that, it doesn't look that great small, that's fine. But it will um, look a little better if I tweak it in Photoshop at a better size. I'm going to save that one. It's going to replace icon 48. And I'll do that again for the last size of thirty six. The splash screens are going to be very similar. We just need to know what size is our starting point for the splash screen, and then we design a splash screen and so forth. Uh, before we get to that, if I if I look at the res folder screens, Android, I mentioned before that what we have is a high DPI and a low DPI, medium and extra high. But now we've got for landscape and for portrait. Our app is locked to 
portrait, so we're not going to need to design landscape sizes. But looking at these dimensions, L DPI portrait, I'm going to note here in my paper, this one should be 320 by 426. The medium is 320 by 470. The high is 480 by 640. The extra high is 720 by 960. So again, I'm going to need a, a file with a size of at least 720 by 960, and I'll suggest the size in a moment. And then we're going to design the graphic and then export it to, to replace these. And the way I would do this, I, the way I would kind of recommend to do this is, starting from this icon, I could use this as then my starting point to make my splash screen. So let's go to Image Menu, Duplicate. I'm going to duplicate this file to create my splash screen. Image duplicate. And I will call this splash 1920. Okay, what this does is it gives me a copy of this file, and you see I've got the tab with the original icon, and then a copy with this one. Well, we will then further go to Image Menu, Canvas Size. We're going to change this in sizes of um, pixels, and say 1080 by 1920. So this again is future proofing us a little bit. We're creating an HD quality size 1080 by 1920, which we will then shrink down to the four sizes that I've noted. And we've got a graphic large enough that as these devices get bigger and more powerful, we've got particular sizes to work with uh, with, the, uh, with those future sizes. So I click OK. And now I've got the splash screen that big. I'm going to save that file before I start making any changes so that I save it as a Photoshop file. I'm not doing Save for Web yet. I'm saving it, a, I'm doing a regular Save As so that I save it as a PSD work in progress file. And so in this uh, this file for my splash screen, here's where I would further make some design about my, my app. I might add, for example, with the text tool, I might I might write the name of my app. I've got the text tool at the top for some fonts, colors,
so design wise that there'll be time in in the lab and other days and such for you to really design your your icons your icons and splash screens I'm just putting together something quickly here and um, I need to export this as the various sizes that the app expects Let's say I'm saving, let's say I'm going to export this one, so file, export, save for web. Uh, one issue that happens here that if I'm, if I'm exporting this down to 72, I mean 720, I type 720 and then I type 960, well, the problem is that the dimensions are locked. I keep typing what I want and it chooses a different dimension, so you need to unlock, you need to turn off that chain so that then you can have the dimensions that it wants. So if it's not changing to the size that you want, you'll need to turn off the lock. So I noted that I noted that one of the dimensions was 720 by 960, so that's the one I want. I'll save that, and then this time I'm saving this into the screens folder, and I'm only going to concern myself with the portrait ones. This one of uh, 720 is H is X H D P I, so that's the one I'm going to select. That's the one I'm going to replace. So screen XHDPI is what I'm replacing. It'll, of course, confirm for me to replace that, so I will. Question? What was the size again? That one was 720 by 960. You might, wanna, you might need to turn off the lock if it's not that little chain, I mean. If the, if the dimensions are not changing how you want, you might turn off that little chain at the edge there. So now I've replaced one. Oh, actually, I forgot to do, do one thing. I'm going to do that again. We don't want transparency, actually, on the splash screen. If there's transparency, the weird thing that's going to happen is the splash screen will appear, but will be transparent, and you'll see your app before it actually loads up. So for splash screens, we don't want transparency, and we can easily fix that right here. You set your dimensions, and then you say no transparency. So I do want either a plain white background, or here you can change your colors. Black background, white, choose your color. So for the splash screen, no transparency. Save that again and replace the one that I replaced. The next size that I need is 480 by 640. I got the sizes by looking at the the folder where my splash screens are and you can click one time on a particular graphic and it should tell you down at the bottom.
So this the 480 by 640 is the HDPI. The one that's high DPI. Next I've got my medium DPI and those dimensions are 320 by 470. DPI portrait. And the low DPI is 320 by 426. So that's my LDPI portrait. So in my splash screen, I've got, in my splash screen folder, I've got the splash screens I designed to, to then see the result and actually put them into the app. This is when I would go back to Visual Studio and I would go and I would do the uh, run on device. I would then compile it. Uh, mine apparently ran out of battery, so I can't show you. But um, I would then uh, open it back on Visual Studio, compile it, and I will see the icon splash screen appear at the beginning. Those icons that I have as part of the app, I will see them when I go to the list of all of my installed apps. I'll see it there. So I won't be able to do that final step, but the idea is we can design our own splash screen, our own app icon, if we know the names, the dimensions, and where they get saved in our project. We don't need to change any code at all. It's just about putting our graphics in the right place with the right names and the right format. Uh, once it's there, then Visual Studio, we compile, it integrates it, and we've got new icons. So eventually, on, on the next assessment, some of these things are, are going to be what I'll be looking for. Do you have your own icon? Not the generic Cordova icon, C Cordova splash screen. I want to see something of yours. It doesn't have to be amazing. You don't have to be a professional. Um, you know, stick figures here, it will be fine as long as it's not the built in Cordova icons. We only need to focus on for the splash screen. The portrait one you can leave alone the other ones I would not delete them because the code is the code is looking for these and if you were to delete these landscape ones you'll get errors because the code will say where are these landscape files um, 
so I would leave them there. Uh, you'd have to edit. You'd have to edit the config XML file to remove the reference to those landscape files. So don't worry about it. But yeah, you could do that too, just to be safe. Create your own landscape versions too. The only issue though is because our app is locked into Portrait, we'll never see the landscape one. So you could do that. You'll never see them. But if you want it fully correct, then do it. Yeah. So that's the idea here, a little bit of graphics. Uh, we want to confirm that before you leave, you've got your CBDB project on your tablet. When we come back next time, we'll start to work on the next portion of CBDB, which is starting to do the save comics and all of that. So I'll end the lecture at this point. I'll put a copy of my file into the network folder. If you'd like a copy, we'll do a little lab time until 9.30.